I tried a new question structure. We'll see.
correct and incorrect. So this is the right order, I think. Let me know if I've made a mistake. Okay, cool. <laughs> I just questioned myself for a second. Uh, moving on. Yeah, so I think these questions broke the whoever wrote bots for the coup. <laughs> Okay, another one of these questions. typically requires traversal of the list. because you gotta traverse from the beginning to the tail, searching for a node because you gotta go through the list to search for a node. If you're working with the head, you don't need to actually go through the list. I love crepes. Curl fox. <laughs> Oh, three more questions, sir. Which of the following linkless operation requires malloc? I know a lot of people have questions, frequently asked questions. One of them. When do I use malloc? And when do I not use malloc? Do I need a malloc for this? be creating and inserting we'll use malloc because we need new memory to store it everything else for example deleting you're not creating anything new to store traversing you're just going through what's already exists and updating values in an existing node the node already exists so there's no point of malloc-ing. Um i see a question in the chat about um like the the previous question about single direction like link list already goes link list only goes in a single direction um for this course they only go in one direction uh, that's what we've taught. Um, in future courses, you might encounter something called doubly linked lists, but that's for another time. Okay. 
Which of the following linkless operations requires free? Select to tricky guys, but there's only one answer. Okay, final question. Link lists require contiguous memory allocation. because we don't need a consecutive piece, contiguous piece of memory in the computer to store the data. Shh. Unlike arrays where we do need it, okay? That's why arrays we can use indices because they one after the other to traverse through it. But linked lists, we need to link them with pointers because they are floating, well floating, they, are, they reside in different parts of memory, like each node. All right, wrap up. lecture program that puts everything together hopefully um, we might not get through everything in the starter code that I've put um, but the rest you can do as practice for at home um, so Sasha is going to be back next lecture so Wednesday um, I think she's flying soon or she's currently flying I don't know um, but yeah um, so this is my last lecture with you guys um, okay so a few announcements before we continue. Um, assignment marks will be released sometime this week. Uh, please check it as soon as they're released. We will announce on the Ed Forum when they're released. And if there's any issues, email CS1511 and we will, do, uh, we will work with it. If it's a style marking issue, uh, please email your tutors. Um, but if it's like your performance mark issue, then email CS1511 or anything else like extensions not applied and so on if there's any issues with that. Um, now, I think I got the email like 10 minutes ago uh, or 20 minutes ago about my experience so that is being out. So if you check your emails today, you will see that there's an email about filling out my experience a surveys, which is the survey for everyone, uh, every course at UNSW uh, at the end of the term. So if you guys can all fill it out to give us some feedback for the course, that would be amazing. Um, yeah, it would be really helpful for us to improve the course for the future. Um, okay, so another few um, announcements. Um, next lecture, so Wednesday, Sasha is back and she will be spending that lecture going through exam information, okay? Um, so all the details related to exam will be answered on Wednesday. And in week 10, so next week, next week we're going to have a practice exam, which will be in a similar structure as um, to your final exam structure. So it's really important you kind of practice with it. Um, they will be held in the in-person labs, like in the exam environment where there's like no internet, no Google and so on. Um, and you can see what kind of resources you're being supplied within the exam environment. Um, now, if you're in, enrolled in an online shoot lab, 
um, we will put out a link to sign up for one of the existing lab sessions in person for you to test out your login and if there's capacity to um, try out the session in person but we know that not everyone is interested in doing that you can just you can still access the exam paper ex itself online um, without going in the in-person lab so don't worry about that um, lastly we have lost a last set of revision sessions in week 11 so um, the sign up links will be out probably next week um, but yeah look out for those okay so like I said before we have live code um, the starter code, so we're working with some starter code today, will be on the this link, as usual. So last few lectures, we went through linked lists, we went through traversal, like insertion, deletion, traversal, and that's basically it to the, like, what you need to know for linked list. Um, and you can do your assignment too as well. So what we're going to do today is do more practices to bring everything together um, with a linked list program. Um, but before I do that, okay, I've dumped in some slides from last week, but I won't go through these. Basically, last lecture, or last, last lecture, um, in at the end of those slides, which I didn't get to show everyone, I made a little checklist and a little, like, two mini frequently asked questions about, oh, why do we use malloc and free and so on? Um, so if you want to go back and have a look at this, just to, you know, check up on your knowledge and so on, um, you can do that in your own time. Now, for today, um, the, before we get into like the big bulk of things, there's a few little things I want to address, basically fill in some of the gaps um, that I might have missed in the previous few lecture. Firstly, we spoke about memory leaks in the last lecture, in the last few lectures, um, about how we need to be freeing out memory um, before the program ends as good habit. So for one for one programs, the programs only last for like two seconds. Um, so the memory gets freed after the program ends anyways. So it's like, okay, what is the point of freeing your memory before the program ends now? So in the context of this course, like there's no, like you can't actually see any like benefits. But if you think about if there's a program that goes up for like months or years, like it just keeps running. And imagine if it keeps malloking memory and you just never free anything, even if you're done with that piece of memory, um, you're going to end up hogging a lot of um, memory space inside your computer and end up running out of space because there's only really limited, you know, amount of space in the computer. So then it's really important that we check for memory leaks and including your assignment too, it's really important you're checking for memory leaks. Um, and the way to check that is we actually got a tool with the compiler the, uh, with DCC where um, I think you will work with it this week in the labs as well. Um, dash dash leak check, okay? So if you add this at the end of your program, your DCC compilation like command, um, it won't do anything when you compile, but when you, when you try and run it, it will um, show you errors if there are errors. I'll show you in a second um, how that works. So that's one thing. So I just want to mention that the DCC leak check helps you check memory leaks um, when you try and run the program after you DCC it. Now, the other thing, I saw a student posting on the forum about um, insert at position, and then I had a look back at the code, and I realized, hey, there's actually a bug that none of us spotted. Okay, so I just want to go back and address that bug really quickly. Okay, address that bug really quickly. So if we go back to the code from last week, um, insert at node, uh, insert at position, sorry. Insert at position, okay. Um, not sure how much of this you remember, but if you recall, we loop until the position number that we want to be inserting our node at. And then after that, I said, well, if counter is equal to the position, that is, if we've reached a position we want to insert after the loop, then we kind of add the new node into the uh, list. And then otherwise, then otherwise we might have reached the end of the list. So we print out, hey, the position number is too big because the position number is actually bigger than the length of the list. Um, so then we free the new node because we can know we can't add it into the list. Um, now there's an error. With, there's a there's a bug with this. Can anyone spot the bug here? What is the bug here? Have a look at this loop condition, and then have a look at what I'm checking here. What could potentially happen? Anyone? Give it a little bit. Yes. 
Okay. Yes. Yes, perfect. If current is equal to null, right? Because when we end the list, it could be current is um, equal to null that we ended the list, or it could be current is equal to position at the end of the list, or it could be both. Okay, it's not just a one or the other. It's or or end. It's one of these. So this particular case, let me show you just that the fact that it breaks. So it will break specifically, I put it on the slide, it will break specifically when you try to insert a node at position length minus one. So um, for example, if you're inserting a new node at the position six, when the linked list only have f has five nodes. So um, let me show you. So if I print out the current list we have, sorry. <laughs> It currently is there's no issues where we're like removing and adding like what we called in the functions now let's say this is the list we end up with like 11 7 6 and what I'm going to do is insert at position and I want to insert uh, give me a second what a it's a position some data some position and the list give the list so the data, let's say we want to insert zero in position. So we've got four numbers in our linked list. I'm going to want to insert it into position five, let's say. Okay. Um, insert it into the list. Let's say I do that and then I want to print the list out. What's going to happen is you will see this yucky error. And this is a very common error when you're working with linked lists. Uh, runtime error accessing a field via null pointer because if we have a look at this line we have it's saying on this line our current is actually equal to null and when we try and access current next well current is null where's the next pointer if current is null right so we're trying to access a null pointer as such in here okay so uh, that's where the issue is and basically the fix for that is when we check if car if car counter is equal to position in our insert at position um we just want to check that it's also that current is not equal to null okay before we go into this if statement otherwise if current is null then hey the position number is too big and we're free to know so if i try and just just quickly run that again yeah so now it no longer um breaks there's no longer the error and it just prints out the list as it is because the number didn't successfully get added because the number was too big okay so that's just one bug that i wanted to address from before um okay so let's move on. Uh, any questions actually okay let's move on um so i summarized I kind of went back and summarized um, some of the frequently encountered issues now that we've had a bit more practice in the labs with linked lists as well. Um, and there's three things that I generally see and that you might generally encounter. You might not know Ooh, what's happening. So um, first thing is accessing a null pointer variable. So it's what I just showed you the error up just then. And eventually, essentially the key things that you want to look at when you look at that error is firstly the error itself. When you see that error, check what line it is on because it's probably complaining about that line. You have some kind of a null pointer, some kind of a pointer that's actually null and you can't actually do an arrow on that null pointer. And so you want to check the values for that particular line as well. Okay. Um, the second one is we haven't shown it here, but it's something called an uninitialized pointer. Um, that happens when you don't, so I've got something, an example code on the top right hand corner. When you declare a pointer, but you don't make it equal to null or equal to some malic node, okay? And then you try and use that some pointer, I've called it some pointer. Um, then firstly, BCC is actually going to pick that up and give you a warning, being like, eh, it's probably uninitialized. Um, and then you will probably encounter some error when you try and run it, um, because it's accessing some piece of memory it's not meant to access because it's not being initialized. The third thing is the thing I was talking about DCC leak check before. Um, it's a memory leak. So when you use the dash dash leak check with DCC, it's going to cause you to have 
um, so if you compile it, it's going to, when you run it, if you have leaks, it's going to pick up on the leaks, sorry. Um, so here's an example of what it will look like when it picks up on the leaks. It will show you, hey, there's an error. Free not called for memory allocated. So the program will still run if everything, like the output is all correct. Um, but you get a message at the end saying, hey, you haven't freed all your memory before you ended the program. Okay, and it will generally tell you what function it the the malloc was from. So in this case, it's from the create node ooh, create node function where the malloc is, um, because for everything you malloc, you want to free before the program ends. Um, so that's that. So coming back to our linked list.c from last week then, I've added a to-do comment because this program is actually incomplete where we haven't actually freed all our memory before we ended our program, right? So if I try and DCC this with leak check, it will give me an error when I run it at the end, right? With the free your code with the memory. <coughs> Okay, so that's that's the three yeah that's the three errors. Um, any questions about that? No questions. No so questions. Yes. standard programs that we had for the, the weekly test when you had made the link this early, you already freed that stuff. It was only when we made our own malloc stuff that we needed to free it. Are you talking about this link this dot C here? Sorry. In the in the um, questions we had for the lab. Yeah. That you'd already made a linked list, so you'd already agreed. Yeah, so a lot of the linked list questions in the labs are focused on, hey, implement this particular function. So um, you only need to care about whether you need to free in that function in the sense that if you're deleting nodes in the function, you want got to make sure the thing that you're deleting is freed. Otherwise, all the memory leaks outside of it, like freeing everything else at the end of the program is already catered for you. So it's dependent on the question. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, sometimes, if you notice, sometimes, because we're all human, sometimes we might forget to free the memory. So if you spot anything where it's like, wait, this is completely about memory leak, but I'm pretty sure I don't have one, then please report it to us. Okay, any other questions? Cool. Is audio cutting out from off online? Testing one, two? Hello? Okay, let me know in the chat. Okay, one person. Um, okay, cool. Uh, moving on. Okay, so the focus of today um, is we want to do a bigger linked list program, okay? And it's bigger than what we've done so far in the lectures, but it's a little bit smaller than assignment too because we don't have that much time to give you enough context in a two-hour lecture. So, um, but the structure is quite similar to your assignment too um, in some ways. So it might help if you haven't started your assignment too, it might help with that as well. Um, we're gonna put link lists in a particular context, specifically about emails, actually managing emails. And the key takeaway today is also understanding provider code, because sometimes it can be very overwhelming when you see like multiple files provided to you with a lot of existing code already. It's like, where do I start? How do I understand this? And of course, we'll do more variations of link list operations today as well. Um, again, we might not get through everything, but we'll see how we go. So, like I said, um, the context is emails. So the program will be about managing emails, okay? An email managing system. Um, basically, our emails in our folders, in our, like, maybe your Outlook, Gmail, and so on, um, we're going to represent the emails as linked lists. And you're given three files. Again, you can access them in the live lecture code. Um, where there's a dossier file email management system.c, which is where we want to complete the code. Um, there's an email management.h, which is where the function prioritize and a lot of the definitions are. And then there's a main.c, which is also provided to us. So we don't need to touch main.c. It's the main driver of the program that calls the functions and so on. But today we'll spend some time understanding what each file is doing before we start coding. Um, okay, so the task here is to complete all the to-dos in the code. Um, specifically, we only need to really touch email management system dot C. Um, I've, I've listed an assumption here, which we'll come to later, but 
all like emails are kind of unique in terms of its subject line. Um, but it will make more sense when we come to coding. All right, so, all right, so let's first understand what the provider code is doing and how they connect together. Uh, let me get it up. So I'm going to open the three files. Ooh. Okay, so we've got three files. Um, let's go down. I'm going to CD into the right directory, actually. I'm going to be editing. So there's there's two folders in the live lecture code. One is starter code. I won't touch that just in case you want to do it from scratch at home. Um, I'm going to touch the other one without the starter code. Bit. Okay, so we've got three files. Let's look at whenever I get files like this full includes, I always, it's a habit of mine, but I always like to look at the .h file first. Um, because that gives us a lot of the definitions of the functions we need to implement, the functions we can use, um, and the different definitions that are potentially uh, available to us. So the .h file will consist of different definitions, like in your assignment too, um, and function prototypes. And what you can see is the first thing we want to have a look at is this, this bit. The struct definitions, okay? This tells us... Um, what the structure of our linked list is going to look like, okay? And specifically, we have a struct folder. Inside the struct folder, there's a name for the folder. And this, I've commented out, we'll come back to this. Um, we might add an integer to this. Uh, but we've also got an emails pointer, which will point to a list of emails, okay? So there's a folder, there's a struct folder, and then there's a pointer that will point to the beginning of a linked list of emails. And each email node, each node in our linked list of emails is going to look like our struct emails. And we know that because this is the type here, and this is the pointer to that type, right? So this emails pointer is going to point to something like this. And each of our email struct email nodes is going to have a sender, who the sender is, a subject line, um, what the size of the email is, um, the type of email. So if we look at the type, it's like an enum email underscore type kind of thing. So what is that, right? So then we look up, we search up in our code, where is that? I know it's at the top here, but sometimes if you don't know, then you might want to control F. But here there's a definition. Hey, an email type can be either a draft, a received, or a sent email. Okay, it's defined by email, meaning that this type can either be a draft, received, or a sent value. And then we've got a priority, which I've represented as integers. Um, and I've hash defined them, actually, to have better style, hopefully. Um, but, you know, one is high priorities, two is normal, and three is low kind of thing. And the key here is what links up all the email nodes. Again, it's like the next pointer. So we've got a struct pointer next. Um, that points to a next struct email node. Now, note that we're no longer using the word node here, but I'm still going to be like, oh, the linked list node and so on, because we're just referring to the element list, so a particular email on the list. Um, just giving it different names in a particular context. <coughs> so I've kind of marked out which ones we have to implement and which ones are provided to us. Um, some of them are provided because we've done very similar code in the lectures. Uh, I will talk about them when we get there. But here are all the function prototypes that we're working with. Um, and some of them are what we need to implement. So we've got the function prototype here, which means the corresponding email management.c. So this is the header file, okay, where the definitions are. Um, now we've got a corresponding email management system.c where the actual definitions or actual implementations of our function prototypes in our .h file is. Ah, so you can see that a hash includes the .h file because we need the function prototypes at the top. Um, we've also got some additional function prototypes here in the .c file. This is because um, they are functions that we implement in this file that we might need for other functions we implement. So basically they're like helper functions in the .c file, which don't need to be in the .h file. It's just extra code in this file that we kind of divide it. Hey, let's split it up into a different function. Um, so we have function prototypes here as well. Um, that is different from the .h file. And then so after that, we've got the following that we've got the function definitions. Each one of this these function definitions scrolling down 
um, some of them implemented, some of them not implemented, should correspond to either one of these function prototypes or one of the function prototypes in the .h file. And then, okay, I want to mention something here. So the functions where I've left us to do's, I've intentionally, I've intentionally left them in a very similar structure to your assignment twos to do's. Okay, if you look in your assignment twos dot c file where you have to modify, you will see something like this, and there's an exit one. Okay, um, that just means, hey, when you reach this point, like if this function was called. Uh, print out like it hasn't been implemented like just so the program still runs um, and to let you know hey this function hasn't been implemented and it's gonna exit right there so the program's gonna end right on that line it's not gonna return from the function it's gonna, not gonna do anything following from the function it's just going to end the program right there because this function hasn't been implemented and it will return with a value of one so it's, it's like in your main function how does return zero and return one which is exiting here it's like saying return one in your main function okay but we're just stopping the program right here um so you will see that in all the to do codes like if it's not provided i've provided a few of the code um to do's to do's now the other thing i want to mention is some of these filled out stuff is i've kind of made a comment for each one of them where it's similar to a previous lecture code we've gone through that's why I've provided them instead of coding them here today. Um, oh, I've left one out to, for us to do. But anyways, uh, that's what um, they are. So basically, link lists can be quite repetitive once you understand it. And you can basically apply your understanding of a particular operation to a particular context. And that's all you need to do. And that's basically assignment two. Um, yeah, that's, that's the definitions. Uh, any questions so far? Okay. Um, so then now lastly, okay, we have the .h file and the .c file, which gives us the definition of the functions and what the functions are that we can use. So then we have a main .c, which is actually going to be the file that contains the logic of the program, like how the program is going to run. And this file will call functions from that are defined in our email management system .h, okay? That are prototypes in the .h file. So it can call like print email, print single email, and so on. Um, so that's why at the top, we have a hash include of email management system .h in the main.c file. And again, we won't be touch, we won't be actually needing to code anything here, but I might make modifications as we go. Um, but I've basically made a program that is calling each one of the functions that we implement and I've made a printf to explain what's happening there. So hopefully at the end, when we implement everything, what this program is going to do is insert some emails, print the emails, you know, count how many emails there are, search for a particular email, print some email that we searched for, insert, make a new folder, and insert more emails into the list, and then print the emails, delete, you know, more, more operations. We'll come to it. Uh, it's going to work with a bunch and eventually we're going to clear up all the memory, okay? So we don't want this program to have any memory leaks like our link list not seen. Um, where was I? Okay, so that's all to the three, three files. Um, let's go back to the definition at the top. So like I said, um, this forms our structure, link list structure, and I've actually put it on our slides, a visual representation of what this program could look like. I always draw this out before I start an assignment. Uh, for your assignment two, it's already drawn out for you, which is great. Um, but this structure as folder looks like this, right? We've got a folder, some kind of a pointer that's going to point to the struct folder definition that has a name, potentially num emails and emails pointer that will point to a link list of emails, right? Um, so if you recall your head pointer from previously in the lectures, this folder arrow emails will now be the head pointer. Okay. So there's an extra layer there now where we used to have a link list where it's just a pointer directly to the head of the list, the node, the first node in the list. Now we have a pointer that's pointing at a particular struct 
which contains a head pointer that points to the list. Okay, but to the beginning of the list. So there's a little extra struct here. Don't get confused there. Um, but everything else is the same. Okay, right, so let's go back and look at this code and probably start coding some of it. Um, if there's no questions. We're all good. Okay, so like I said, we only really care about right now our email system, manager system dot C. <coughs> um, because we don't have like a assignment spec here, I, uh, I've written the stuff in the comments, but for your assignment too, make sure you're reading the spec because some of the details might not actually be in the files, but they're in the spec. Um, so firstly, we want to, let's implement the create folder function. This should be hopefully straightforward to us relatively because all we want to do here is we want to malloc some memory for our folder, okay, our struct folder. Um, and to do this, we are going to have a look at, I'm going to put my sneaky notes up, give me a second. Okay. Okay. To do this, we are going to have to look at what our struct folder looks like. Um, maybe I slip row, slip row. Here, here we go. Um, Okay, our struct folder has a name and an emails pointer. So let's just first buy, we need to malloc some memory for our struct. Now it's no longer struct node, right? We were trying to create a folder and I'm gonna call it struct new folder because it's a new folder. We're going to malloc some memory and the memory we're mallocing now is to store a struct folder, right? Because we're trying to create a struct folder node. Oh, struct folder struct, sorry. Um, okay, so once we've done that, once we've malloc some memory, we want to initialize the fields inside our struct. So there's name. So new folder name. We want it to equal to actually the name that's being passed in, okay? When when someone creates a new folder, it's go they're going to pass in a name for us. Um, now, I always have the tendency to want to do this, but remember, the type of name is a string, so we want to use string copy. Okay, and then this is not done yet, because we also have another field inside our structs. So I want to make sure that that field is also initialized. And for now, we're just going to initialize it to null. Assuming that there's no emails, because we've just created the folder. And finally, if we look at the return type of the function, it's a struct folder pointer, meaning that we can return something of that type. And we want to actually return the new folder that we've created, which is of that type. Okay. So that's that. First thing done. Um, now this create folder will be used in our main.c if we have a look to create a new folder. Uh, so we don't need to worry about that bit, we just needed to worry about the implementation of create folder. Okay, moving on, let's go and implement, actually before we go. So similarly, uh, like create folder, we've got a function call for creating the email struct node um, that we're talking about, um, the email struct node, and initializing all the stuff in it. So the create email function takes in all the details about a particular email that we need to make a uh, struct email and we mount some memory for it and then we initialize all the fields. Now, I just want to mention, because this is very important. Um, although the next, like what the next value should be is not passed into the function. Um, when you're creating a new email and so on, make sure you initialize the next pointers. Like for any kind of linked list operations, if you're creating a new node, make sure the next pointers are initialized, even if there's no nothing in the next thing, right? If like there's no next node, just initialize it to null. Otherwise you will encounter the common error that I was talking about before about uninitialized pointers and so on, potentially in your code. Um, so big fit, uh, big hint, sorry, for assignments. Um, all right, so create email is done for us. Simil very similar to create folder. Um, insert email ahead is also done for us. This is very similar to insert head from our lectures, um, except now our head is no longer, um, 
code head. It's called email our uh, email folder our emails in this particular function um, because remember we've got like that extra layer of struct folder now in our data structure. Um, okay, and then I've got some prints. Um, print single email, as the name suggests, it just prints out a given email if you pass a particular struct email in. It just prints out all the details relating to it. <coughs> and then we've got a print emails, which prints out all the emails in a given folder. Okay, if you give it a pointer to a particular folder, um, it will print out all the emails that are in that folder. Um, okay, so then we have this, okay, count emails. Um, this is already done for us. What this function does is it goes through all the emails in the folder and counts how many emails there are, right? Very straightforward. But it's a little bit inefficient where um, every time you call this function, it's going to go from the beginning to the end and count how many emails there are in a given folder. Does anyone know what I mean by we want to, like how, what, what I'm referring to, like when I say we want to improve this and how we might improve this? A big hint if we're, so we want to count how many emails are in the folder, right? A big hint is have a look at, oh, sorry, wrong file. Uh, so a big hint is have a look at the .h file. Have a look at this. What do I want to do to this function, actually? Does anyone know? So, what we want to do, okay, instead of, instead of um, counting every single time we go through counting emails, why don't we, okay, why don't we just make sure that every time we insert a new email in our functions where we're inserting, we have a integer in our struct folder already that keeps track of how many emails there are. And every time we're inserting, we increment that integer. Every time we're deleting, we decrement that integer. And so when we come to counting the emails, we don't need to loop through it again because we've already got it in our num emails. And so then all we need to do instead of this is just return email folder where we have a num emails integer, okay? Um, but in order to do this, we need to actually implement it. So let, let's go back. So this is what we want to do so that it saves us from looping, which is a lot more efficient. Um, so to implement that, we want to have this, okay? introduce to find this integer in our folder so that every single folder is associated with a num emails. If every single folder is associated with a num emails, that means in our create folder function, we need to make sure that we also initialize num emails. Okay. And it's going to start at zero because we're creating an empty folder. Uh, I've got some sneaky notes just so I don't forget all the positions we have. Um, so let's keep this particular variable in mind for now um, as we're implementing all the other stuff. Um, okay, so if we look back at the other functions that's already been implemented, actually, let's do that first. We got to make sure all the insertions actually num emails plus plus and all the deletions actually num emails minus minus. So let's scroll through our functions that are implemented. Uh, create email doesn't need anything. Insert, okay, insert email ahead. We're gonna make sure that the folder that we're inserting into, um, that num email gets num email plus plus. So let's do it here. Um, what are we doing? Email folder, num emails, let's plus plus that, okay? Um, I'm doing it there, note that, because if I, let's say if I do it at the bottom, right? then it won't num emails plus plus for this particular if statement because we have an early return here. So the function will end there. So I've intentionally done it at the very top. So that it applies to all the cases. Um, let's see if there's uh, any other functions implemented about insertion or deletion. Um, for the to-dos, we'll add them in when we implement them. Insert email at tail. Okay, we've got an insert email at tail. So let's make sure we also 
email folder. Now I'm emails plus plus. Um, sweat folder. Okay, that's all. That's all that we we have right now that needs to where we need to modify numemos. Um, so the next thing we want to do, but we'll take a break before we do it, is let's scroll down. If you want to have a think about how you do this in the break. So that, wait, sorry, sorry. So that, going back to the little, so that's all to the count emails function. Instead of all this code, we just got that one line. Now that we've implemented it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is search for an email, um, which we'll do after a break. Let's take a five-ish minute break, um, and we'll come back in a bit. I'm gonna, oh, sorry. Give me one second. I'm gonna put a poll in the chat if everyone can vote on it, um, just so I can gauge how we're going. example I gave here uh, when I was talking about creating email right although like in if you look at the arguments they have sender subject size type priority but there's one thing that's in the email that's not here which is what the value of next should be right so that in this case we know we would since we're just creating one email we logically think, okay, I'm just going to make that next point up equal to that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it's like yes. that. Yeah, the what if I'm using all the parameters? All the parameters of the script. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. Uh, hold on. Next next it is a no. It's the second loss, yes. Uh, but we don't want to. We don't want to do well. Kind of next, next, next. I think. I think the limit is too much. Next, like well, kind of next, next. Well, the limit is too much. Next, next, next. You can do kind of next, next, next. It's just it's very hard to read. This is like you might want to understand a lot of the rules. So not just the cards, but the previous points. That also moves as you go. Yeah. So why can't you like introduce the previous? Oh. Previous point. If we say like, oh, if, what, if we want to do the first one, like, so if we release now, yes. so we just do this, yes. we just put our hat, point here to the next, yes. and we can three of them, like, of the hat. Yes. So it's like, hat, hat, we see what you want, like, pouring hat, yes. and three hat. Yes. And if it wants to, um, if, I mean, we also need to also do this to visualize say three equal to parts and pouring this into part of that. Because we need to make it go down. Depends on what the function is. If your function only wants to do it in one thing, then you still need that. But let's say you have a block of the um, then with the traverse tool, you have to make sure that the current point is the previous so that it's always the previous point. Yeah, so the question is essentially, so um, you find the maximum value, and you find the maximum value, and you do it. So for example, five to five, five to five. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to do it the first two to five. Yeah. So you just need to like, move to the next two. Uh, if the first two elements are five, then you don't need to use the previous, so you can just delete the head and then you can do it. But let's say if it was 2 to 5, and the 5 is at the end, then you might want to do the previous and the current, and then move them along until the current gets to the 5, and then so you can move the previous next to the point of the current. Yeah, if we want to find a current, how many um, elements they got, we can use the wild. Uh, Yes, it's not, not it's not that efficient. Um, but if you want to try the method that I showed before, right? Are you talking about counting the list? Remember how I showed this? How this is the more efficient way? Like if you keep track of the number of yeah. numbers. I mean, for one by four, it doesn't matter, but if you want to go ahead and do it. Of course, yeah, 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 of course. How about what type of data? What type of variable? It should be inside. It should be state dot here equal to from state dot here. Oh, you don't need to, but if you want, if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
So I'm referring to email folder here when I'm counting emails, right? It's like, wait, where is that email folder coming from? So remember what we're doing here is we're shh. Remember what we're doing here is we're implementing a function, okay? So here, we, what, all we want, all we care about when we're implementing a function is the function itself and what's being passed into the function. In this case, we're passing in a pointer to a struct folder, which then contains a list of emails, right? Like this. So we don't need to really care about where the email folder comes from. We just need to know whenever someone's using this function, they're going to give us something like this. So then we can assume that there's an email folder um, and we can access things inside it. Well, probably if we wanted to be really safe, we probably want to check that email folder is not equal to null. Like if it's equal to null, return early. Uh, but I'm making the assumption here it's that it's not equal to null, just to simplify things a little bit. Um, what am I doing? Ah, yes. So eventually, once you've implemented this function, it gets used somewhere. And again, coming back to the main.c, if I just search for count emails, there's a function called somewhere where we're passing in an actual folder, okay? So when this function gets called now, folder one, wherever we've defined folder one at the top, is going to be passed into this function. So when we're referring to email folder, we're referring to that folder one, uh, the the thing, the, the folder node, uh, the, fo the struct folder at the address that folder one is pointing to, to be very precise. Um, but yeah, so that's where email folder comes from. But when we're implementing this function, we don't really need to care about anything outside of this function. We just need to care about what is given to us. So what's actually in the parenthesis and what do we need to return and what this function is doing. Okay, what this function, we want this function to do. And then think about all the edge cases. Okay, um, since majority of us is okay with the starter code, I'm going to keep going uh, with implementing the functions. So next one we wanna implement. Also, let me know in the chat or here if you want me to draw some diagrams. Some of these, this code, I will skip out on drawing diagrams perhaps to kind of try and go through more of the functions. Um, okay, so search email. Okay, search email, what we want to do here for this particular function is once we're given a string, okay, for the email, the folder's name, the email folder, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Once we're given the string for the subject of the email, um, we want to look for the email where this subject is the string. Okay, so uh, for example, in my main dossi, where did I call, where did I call search emails? Search email. Okay, here. Um, so this is calling search email. It's saying, hey, can you search in folder one for the subject assignment one? Uh, <gasps> I, I did something accidentally. This, this, this main function is bugged because I changed some stuff, but I didn't change everything else. So let's search for A instead, um, because we've got a subject called A. I'm going to modify it as I go because I decided last minute that I wanted to change the subject to single letters so it's easier to explain. Apologies. Um, but I'll come back and modify the subject names as I go. Okay. Anyways, so we want to search for emails. Uh, so that's one place where we're searching emails. Where's the other place? Okay, this is the other place we're searching for emails. And let's say we're searching for that particular email, right? The email with the subject line of A, um, just to simplify things. Um, so we want to implement this function. And to do this, given a folder, um, there's going to be a list of emails. So time to traverse through it, okay? And whenever we're traversing through a list, we probably want a parent pointer. And we want to start the current pointer at head. But remember, there's nothing called head here, right? We want to start at the head of the list though. Where is the head of our list? The head of our list is in the given folder, specifically the emails pointer in the given folder. So if you're like, oh wait, how do you know that? This is where the diagram becomes handy. Because you look at the given folder, so the purple thing, and then the emails pointer in the purple. Why did it just go all funny? Okay, uh, the email pointer in the given folder then points to the beginning of a list of emails. So that is our head, okay? Email arrow folder is our head. Oh, chaotic. Okay, yeah, so this pointer is our head pointer. Um, again, any questions, feel free to stop me at any time. 
I'll be looking up and checking for questions. So, so yes. you want to um, cycle through it and then use like a string compare to, to find the, the right next to it? Spot on. That's exactly what we're going to do now. So now that we've declared a current pointer, we're going to cycle through it. So this hopefully is now familiar to us, right? This structure. And then in here, as we're traversing through each particular, each node, sorry, each email, we are going to compare the email's subject with the given subject, okay? The given subject line is passed in as an argument. So here I'm going to compare with an if statement. And if they match, if they do match, it means we found the email that has the subject that we're looking for, right? So then I can just return whatever current is pointing to, if that's the one. And at the end of the loop, if we get to this point, because this is an early return, so if we find the email, I'm going to fill this if statement in a second, but this is saying if we find the email with the given subject, um, then we're going to return. It's going to early return if we find it, Otherwise, it's going to keep looping, keep looping, keep looping, keep looping until we reach the end of the loop. So if we do reach the end of the loop, it means cannot be found. So we just return null to represent, hey, like no email was found. Okay. Um, now, can someone actually, I, I'll leave this as a question to the audience. How do I express if we find the email with the given subject here? What do I code in here? Yes. So we do start, uh, string compare. Uh, pass on current uh, arrow subject. Current arrow subject, yep. Comma. Yep. And we pass on the subject that we have taken as a currently. Yes, very good. And then anything else? Yes, exactly. Equal to zero. Okay. This one always trips people up. Like, it's a bug that I've seen so many students have, and it takes them hours to figure it out because it's just a, a, a conception about string compare. Um, so remember to keep in mind, string compare returns zero if the two things are equal. So if I'm trying to check whether this is equal to this, like these two strings are equal, I have to check if it's equal to zero. You can think of it as string compare returns how much difference there are between the two strings. And this is saying there's zero differences. That's how I remember it. It does not return one if the things are equal, okay? So make sure you do equal, equal to zero. And we're actually done with this search email function, okay? Um, ideally, whenever we implement a function, I like to test out that function. Just progressively, one function at a time, test it out instead of writing everything like writing all the stages for the assignment and then coming back and discovering I have bugs in every stage. That's very sad to look at. So what I usually do, the trick is I just comment to her all the unrelated or the, 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 the parts that I haven't implemented. So in this case, I'm going to comment everything out here. I'm going to only call everything. So create folder we've implemented, insert email ahead, it's given to us. Um, print email is given to us, count emails we've implemented We've implemented so far with the functions we have. Um, and then search email we just implemented. So I just want to make sure that this actually works as we wish or fix up any code, uh, fix up any bugs if there isn't. So I'm going to compile the things together. Now remember, this is a multi-file thing. like program. So I need to, when I DCC, I need to DCC with both the .c files, okay? You don't need the .h files because they're hash included. And I'm just going to call this program program. Like that. That should work. Okay, as I expected, there's a... Okay, we, we can we can uncomment this line as well. Because this just prints out the email that we find with our search email. So our search email is going to, which is what we just implemented, is going to return us the email that we find. And then all we're doing is use a pointer to point to the email we find and print out all the details relating to that particular email that we found. So hopefully, yeah. If I run it, there we go. Okay, so it might look a little overwhelming, but the, the, the asterisks are just telling you that each step we're doing. 
Um, but you can see when we look for, once we've looked for the, okay, this is not meant to be assignment one. This is meant to be A, sorry everyone. Um, I shouldn't have decided to change my mind last minute, but it happened. Um, but yeah, so this is the email that we found with the subject A, right? And so, yeah, successfully implemented, at least for this case. Um, you might want to test other cases just for this function um, yourself, particularly when you're doing your assignment too. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave this as it is. Um, any questions about that? Okay, if there are no questions, we're moving on. Um, Okay, so we are going to move on to this one. Okay, this one is a little bit more complicated. It's not quite similar to everything we've done so far in the lectures. Um, it's called delete email of priority. Um, and what we want to do in this function is we want to remove the emails with certain priorities. Okay, so remember that for each of our emails, we've got a priority integer. Um, that's actually being hash defined if we look in the .h file, right? So each one of our int priorities in our struct email can be either the value of 1, 2, or 3, being hash defined as 1 being high priority, 2 being normal priority, and 3 being low priority, okay? So for example, someone might want to call this function to delete all the emails of low priority, okay? Of priority 3, let's say. And that's exactly what I did somewhere here. If I uncomment this, um, so I created another folder here, uh, print the folder. I, I called delete email of priority in folder two of all emails that are low priority, okay? Um, that's what's being done there. So here's the thing, okay? The complication here, sorry, that got really loud all of a sudden. Um, the complication here is we can have multiple email is in a list that is low priority, okay? So it's not just deleting one node and then we're done, we move on. It's about traversing through the whole list and making sure we've deleted all the nodes with a given priority. So there's there's actually two ways that came up on top of my head when I was um, working on this, where one is prioritizes readability and convenience. The other one prioritizes efficiency. Okay, I'm gonna talk, just talk a little bit about uh, the one that is um, convenient. So the one that is convenient is you loop through the emails and if you find the one that, uh, if you find an email that you want to delete, aka the one that has, the ones that have priority, as soon as you encounter them, you call another function which goes through the list and deletes a specific node and specified as a node. So if you remember back to last lecture, I think, where we did delete node, so we would probably use a function like the last lecture's delete node, call that as we're looping through the emails, and then um, if we see a priority thing, we call delete node. So we might call delete node like three times if there's three emails that are matching priority, if that makes sense. Um, but the issue with that is, okay, um, let me just write it up because I think that my, I'll write it up in comments. So we will loop through the folder of emails if we encounter email of given priority. This is like semi pseudo code. Uh, if we encounter email of given priority, we are going to call a function that deletes one node of deletes one node. So, um, so it might be a particular function like um, you might have a function called delete specific email, which given a folder, given a folder, and I'm just doing this as a um, pseudocode, but given a folder and a subject, it will delete that folder, uh, that 
that email with the particular subject. Remember our subjects are unique, okay, for every single email. So it's almost like our email IDs. So it will delete the specific email that has that subject. And that will guarantee that this function will only loop through and delete one email and you can reuse like existing code you already know, which is delete node from last lecture. However, this way, if you think about what this function will do is it will have to loop through the list, right? But then remember, we've also got a loop going through here to loop through all the f emails in the folder, which means we have a nest loop here where um, as we loop through each email, when we're trying to delete the specific email, we want to loop through to delete that email again. So it's not that efficient. So I'm going to do it another way here. Any questions so far? You have to be worried about reattaching the, the loop though, right? Like from one node to the next node. You're getting rid of one, so you have to reroute it. Exactly. So if I use this particular method, then I don't have to worry about that because it just deletes one node, make sure it's reconnected together before it loops through and um, keeps going and so on. Um, but if we use the, if we write it in the way that I'm going to do, which is we're going to traverse as we delete, so then we don't have any extra traversals, then we're going to have to reconnect things together and make sure that things are okay before we move on and make sure we don't skip any nodes. Um, and that's what I'm going to demonstrate and I am going to use a diagram for this because... Um, okay, so give me a second. Let me see how we're going for time. Okay. Um, let me get up my, I'm going to close this one, put this here, where's the whiteboard, here we go, okay, time for some diagrams. Alright, so if we want to delete email of a priority, like I said, we're going to go through and loop through as we delete, so we only loop through once, okay? Now. Let's think about this. If the first email was the email that we want to be deleting, like in the list, then we're going to have to delete like that one. And then, so like, like generally with linked lists, we will might go like, okay, check if the head is the one we want to delete, right? But here, here the issue is if the head is the one you want to delete, there might be another one you want to delete. Meaning that if the head is on a delete, you delete it. But what happens if the second one in the list is also the one you want to delete? Then, you have to keep deleting. So what I mean by this is, where's my, okay, diagram, okay. If I want to delete the email that has the subject, oh, sorry, that has the priority, sorry, that has the priority of low, low priority, and then let's say my emails, this is my linked list of emails. I'm just simplifying the diagram a lot because there's like a struct folder and stuff. Um, but let's say if the first two emails in the list were low priority, right? And then the next one was high, let's say. Then if I try and check if this is, if the head is a low priority and delete that, the next one now becomes the head, right? So then I also want to check whether this is a low priority and then delete that. And then what if the next one is also a head? So if, as we delete, the list is changing. And we're checking different things as we're moving. So what we're going to do is instead of an if statement, we're going to say a while statement, okay? From the beginning, we're going to say a while statement. And we're going to say while the email folder emails priority, okay, is equal to the priority we're looking for. Let me try and... Okay. Well, this is well. This is true. So while we're the, it's like the case I have on the right hand side with the diagram. While this is true, what I'm going to do is. Okay. So this is. Let's say if this is the diagram we have on the right hand side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new pointer called temp. Okay. Remember when we're using when we're deleting nodes like last week, we have used the temp pointer sometimes. Um. And I'm going to make the temp equal to the head node, okay? The node at the head. Or the node at, yeah, the node at emails, uh, emails folder arrow emails, because that will be the priority that equals. So, like this. Oh, why did I make my variable name so long? 
um, like that. So if that I do that, then on the diagram it will be reflected like this, where the tenth pointer is pointing at the head, the first thing in the list. And then what I'm going to do, so my goal here, here is to remove this first element. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my emails folder emails, which is this particular pointer here, okay? Let me just draw that out because this is very confusing if I don't draw it out. Remember that this is actually linked to a struct folder. Okay, where this is a struct folder, and in the struct folder, there's an emails pointer. There's also a name, folder name, but this is like that, right? It's like we've got a folder, there's a pointer to the folder, and that's called emails folder. Like that. So the whole thing starts from the bottom, where... Um, Okay, the whole thing starts from the bottom. We've got an emails folder pointer, which is the pointer that's being given to us. It points to a particular struct folder, right? We're assuming here. Um, that's going to have a name, because that's what a struct folder always, always has. And it's going to have an emails pointer that points at the beginning of the list. So what I'm going to do is, once I've made temp point to the first element in my emails, which is email folder emails right i am now going to change this particular pointer here that comes from my folder right so that it points to where what do i want to change it to exactly we want to change it so that it points to temp next right temp next so which is this one so, because we're dealing with pointers, we want to use the arrow notation. So, I'm just going to rub this out. And I am going to point this out here. Because that's what temp next is pointing to. Right. So, basically, we're just trying to make it so that we skip that element. So, that now we can be ready to delete. So, now when we follow our email folder's emails pointer. Right? So, emails folder pointer is this one. The emails pointer is this one. That's, like, very long. It now points at the second element, and then which points at the third element, and so on. Um, which means now I can delete this, which is what I wanted to do, right? So then, I can just say free temp, where temp is pointing at it. Okay? Like that. Okay, so what this, because this is not an if statement, this is a loop. So what's going to happen now is the current, if you look at the current state of our diagram, once we've reached line 166 and come back around, this while loop statement condition is going to, um, this while loop condition is going to go through again and be checked with our new head, right? Our new head is this particular one, which originally was the second element in the list. And then so we go through the if statement, uh, the while loop condition again, is emails folder email. So e email folder email is this particular email here. Is that the priority? Yes, we're trying to delete low, right? Um, so then we're saying, okay, well, let's make a temp point to that now which is line 163 and then on line 164 we say now let's make emails which is this particular point I'm rubbing out make that point to temp next temp next temp is here so the next pointer is pointing at this so we're making it point there right and then now we free temp which will now free this one right and then we reach the end, come back around. While well, emails is equal to priority, it's not equal to priority here because this one has a high priority rather than what we intended was, which was low priority. So then the loop will end there. Okay. Now, once the loop ends, we've actually got more to do here. 
But because this loop here is only catering for when the when the priority uh, when the nodes we want to delete emails we want to delete are at the head. Meaning, if my list, okay, if I just shuffle over, if my list was not just low, low, high email, there was more low emails after, right? Let's say this, there was more low emails after, let's say, it's not going to reach those because we have a high here, right? So it's going to stop there, this loop. So we actually need more code to deal with the rest of the list. Um, but before we do that, there's actually an issue with this loop condition. We're actually missing something here. Anyone, can anyone tell me what we're missing here? Otherwise, we're going to reach an error, specifically, potentially, in some cases, we're going to reach a null pointer error. Yes. Yeah, so long term, Yes, exactly. So, and specifically, I want to do that before this particular statement, okay? I want to do an and here, but the order of which condition we put on the first, as the first thing of the end and the second thing of the end matters because it's what we check first. So, I'm going to check that the email folder emails is not equal to null here, okay? Otherwise, when we try and access the priority of emails folder email, if that was null, then there's no priority and it's going to give us an error. So I've just added a not equal to null here. Can I just check? So when it says bring temp, is that getting rid of both temp and what temp is pointing to? Really good question. So free temp is saying we're freeing the piece of memory that temp is pointing to. Yeah, but what, what happens to that temp before? Is that just not existing? Yeah, so the temp, it depends on where we've declared the temp. So if we've declared if we declare the temp within a function, it will disappear after the function returns. Um, it's just like any other integer, double variable, or any kind of variable we declare in the function, yeah. it will disappear after. Um, the reason why we need to do free for the thing that it's pointing to is because the thing that it's pointing to is something that we've malloced from before. So it's always free and malloc always comes together. Any other questions? Okay, so once we've done that now, this means that there's two possibilities when we are uh, when we end the loop, okay? One is we ended the loop because emails folder email is now not equal uh, is now equal to null, meaning that we've deleted everything in the list. So everything in the list is was um, actually low priority. Or the priority is not no longer equal to priority, okay? So one of these condition, condition how becomes false, then the loop will end. So let's cater for the first one first. So if email folder emails is null, and that was what caused us to end the list, then it means there's nothing to remove anymore because we've just looped through and removed everything, okay? So we can just, this is an interesting thing some of us might not have seen, uh, return. Note that the return type of this function is void, meaning that we don't need to return any values, but I've used the return here without any values to indicate, hey, stop the function there, we don't want to continue to the rest of the code, okay? So I can use this early return without values for void functions to make the function stop there. And I like to do that for linked list, just so we have less nesting of if and else. Or alternatively, you can use if and else if and so on. Um, okay, so that's that. Nothing to remove anymore. The other possibility, okay, so if we, if this if statement is not true, then the other possibility is it must be that emails folder email priority, okay, is not equal to priority, but we still have stuff in the list, okay? But we still have emails in the list, which is what the diagram I, ex oh, what the diagram I extended here, like having the low emails after the high is trying to 
show. Okay, this is the case that has not been catered for, which is what will happen when we are reached this point in our code. So by this time, if that was the case, and our diagram looks like this, where we have um, a struct folder, emails, point out, pointing to, definitely the first one is not a one that we want to remove, but everything follow we don't know, then we will want to do this code. So this is where I want to traverse again. And I'm going to make a current pointer. Point to email folders email. Right? So that means in this particular list, it will point to that high email there. Okay? So current will start there. Now what I'm going to say is while Okay. What I'm trying to do here is I know that this particular head, this particular beginning of the list is not going to be a low, it's not going to be the one that I want to delete because I've already catered for that for, with the code before. So now I can comfortably do this to check that the next element is, sorry, spoilers, let me do it another way. So now what I wanna do, sorry, um, so the purpose of this loop is I want to loop through and check the next element, next node of current to see if it's what we want to delete. Okay, remember that because because in our list, when we want to delete something in the middle of the list, we always need to have access to the previous node that to the node that we want to delete because we need to change the next pointers around. So that's why we're going to keep current and keep checking where the current next is the one we want to delete. Okay, this is the goal of our um <laughs> of our loop. So what I want to do is I'm going to have this is also a very familiar loop condition to us, hopefully where we keep checking if current next is equal to null because we want to check whether current next is the one we want to delete. And if current next is not null, we will jump into this loop, which means I can safely now check whether current next is priority is the priority we are looking for, which is the one we want to delete. Okay. So if the next one is the one we want to delete. If it is, then we repeat what we had before, okay? So if I run this run this um, loop through my diagram on the right-hand side, it's a bit messy now, but if I shuffle over, um, the current pointer is here. Oh, <laughs> give me a second. Okay, right, cool. The current pointer is here. Is it not update? It is it's update. Um, now I want to check, is current next not equal to null? It's not, it's actually pointing at an email that has low priority. So we know that the next one is one we want to remove. That means the if statement is true in this particular case where my current is pointing to. So I can say, let's make a temp pointer. Oops, habit makes me do struct node, but we're actually dealing with emails here. And I want to make the 10 pointer point to current next, okay? Meaning the 10 pointer will point to this particular node, which is the one I want to delete. Then we say current next is equal to temp next, which might look very familiar because we just did that like a little bit ago. And then we want a free temp, okay? So current next equals to temp next. So current next, this one. We want to point it to where temp next is, and then we're going to free temp. That's what's going to happen. Let me just do that nicely. Okay. Now, no, remember that this loop, okay, this is a very key point. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll come to your question in a second. Give me a second. Um, this is a very key point because usually, okay, um, out of habit, I do like a current equals to current next thing at the just before my loop ends 
um, without coding everything else. But to, well, right now, I've intentionally left it out because we don't actually want to move current because current next at this point. If you have a look, if we go into this essay and it deletes the node that's next to it, then we've already changed the pointer to point at the thing afterwards. Okay, which means I don't want to move current to be equal to current next because then we will skip this particular element to check whether it's equal to the priority. So that means instead of doing current equals to current next blindly, okay, I only want to move current to be current next if that if statement here wasn't executed, okay? Because otherwise here we have already changed current next so it points at the element after when we try and delete okay so that's why here the key point is we have an else statement to do the current equals the current next only if we haven't deleted something in this particular iteration of the loop um do we have a question we can so if you're talking about this particular line um you can say current next is equal to current next next indeed um temp next just looks nicer in this particular context because there's less next right um so it's more readable in my opinion now we're not quite done with this function yet because if you recall back to our struct folder remember how we added in a int num emails in this particular function we are deleting emails of a particular priority priority right so we got to make sure every time we delete we num emails minus minus so that means we're deleting here so that i want to do num folders num emails minus minus and i'm going to copy and paste that to where else are we deleting where else are we freeing here so i'm going to do num folder num oh sorry email folder num emails minus minus okay any other any questions okay well while we're maybe thinking of, of our questions um i'm gonna try and run this okay so it's ran everything without without causing errors which is great um i'm just going to uncommon this one as well because it prints out the folder after we try and delete okay so if we have a look at the output we have a list of emails here and you can see some low priority ones right but then after we run deleting low priority which is the function we have we now cannot see any more low priorities it's just high priority and normal priority so our function was successful in this particular case. You might want to do more test cases um, to make sure that you've thought about, we've thought about all the edge cases. Um, but yeah, that's, that's that one. Um, I'm just conscious of the time. So let me just quickly have a look at which ones I want to do today. Um, so we've got delete emails of priority, merge folder, sort folder, split folder. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, sort email. I'm gonna skip merge email. Um, uh, merge folder. You can have a look at that in your own time. Or if we end up getting time, but I don't think so. Um, sort email is actually a challenge because it actually requires the knowledge of sorting algorithms, which is out of the scope of this course. But I've left it there for fun. If you want to do it, um, split folder. Um. I will put up a solutions version of the code so you can have a look at my implementation uh, compared to yours. Um, there's actually two so, uh, solutions that I have, but I'll put it up. What I really want to do right now is clear folder, okay? We're going to finish up the lecture with clear folder because clear folder, okay, clear folder is the one that we are using, if we look at the very end, to, okay. Uh, I'm clearing inbox center draft because we do other stuff. But clear folder is the one, the function that's going to remove all the emails and the associated free, all the associated memory um, in our given folder. 
So let me go to the clear folder. I'm gonna skip everything else. Clear folder. Here, there we go. We're gonna implement this function. This function, we're removing all emails from a folder. Okay. So we need to traverse through it again. The goal is to remove every single email in the folder. Okay. Free all the associated memory because we're, this is what's been called after, just before the program ends. And if I do email folder emails like this, make the current pointer point to the start, right? We're going to now loop through. all the emails, okay? Now, we're looping through, delete each email we encounter. So, in terms of diagram, I am going to, mm, let me, let me, let me do a quick redraw of this diagram, just this bit, just the list bit. It's not updating. Okay, there we go. It's updating. Um, okay, we've got emails, okay? These are our emails. I'm drawing emails. Okay, right, so I've made a current pointer point to the beginning of the list. And I'm saying, well, current is not equal to null. I'm going to make a temp pointer again because I want to delete this one now. I'm going through and deleting everything, okay? There's no if statements going on. So I'm going to make a temp pointer that points to this current email that I'm pointing at. Okay? Once I've done that, I can now move my current to the next email, right? Because now we've got temp referring to it. So current is now equal to current next. And then I can safely free temp. Free temp. Yeah, okay, I can safely free temp. Like that. And then this will now repeat for each thing that the current pointer is pointing at, right? So we come back around the loop, current is not now. So then temp will be equal to this particular node now. And then current will move along and then we'll free temp, and then we'll do that again where temp goes to point, oh, we'll come back around the loop again, temp will point at current, current will move around to null, free temp, and then we we'll reach null, right? Which is when the loop ends. You don't, you don't have to reroute um, the struct folder emails each time. So we don't have to read out struct folder email in this case because we're going to delete the folder itself as well because we're trying to clear everything. Okay, so then the last thing, that's a really good question. So then the last thing I need to do, remember, I've freed everything here, but there's actually still a struct that I've managed from before, a struct folder, right? So I am going to make sure I free that as well. And... That is pointed to via my email folder pointer. Okay, this particular pointer here. So then that's my clear folder. So if I try and run this, okay, if I try and clear folder, and then I've made two folders, folder one and folder two. If I run, the, compile this with dash dash leak check, Hopefully it doesn't complain about any memory leaks. It's no errors. Just to prove to you that these two are actually functioning, if I comment these two out and not call clear folder, which is what we just implemented, it's going to complain about our memory leak if we DCC with a leak check, okay? It's complaining about, hey, we've created some emails, but we actually didn't do, um, free them. Now, another interesting thing is if I uncomment this and if I go back to my free uh, clear folder, and let's say I forgot to do this free email folder. I forgot to free my folder struct, right? If I compile and run it, it's going to now say there's a create folder piece of memory that you forgot to 
free, which is this particular thing, right? The folder that we created. As opposed to the error before, which was complaining about there's a create email, like you've now written create email, but you've never freed it. So this will give you a hint of what you actually forgot to free, but as to where you forgot to free it, that's a rough challenge sometimes when you have a big assignment or like a big piece of code. Okay, so that's 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 the clear bit. Um, any questions? Sorry, can I just say, were you deleting the entire folder as well? Yes, I'm deleting all the memory associated with everything we've created in the program. So did you not just free the folder and then free everything else with that? Really good question. So if I just free the folder, it would just free this thing, right? But the list, each one of these were malloc, right? Well, in our create email function, where we were malloc'ing our emails. So every single thing that gets malloc needs to be free by itself. We need to have a loop to free it. Okay, any other questions? All right, so today we went through linked list, wrapped up, and put some uh, did some lecture program. There's a few functions we didn't do, but I'll leave that in your own time if you want more practices. Next lecture, Sasha will be back and talk uh, to talk about exams. Um, this is my last lecture with you guys. If you could give me some feedback, that would be really good. Thank you so much. Uh, I had so much fun. Thank you for support and listening to my lecture and my talking. Um, and I'll see you.